Hello, artists and animators. Today we're going to speak with two experts who develop tools and training resources for game animation in Toon Boom Harmony. Maria Vlasel is an animator, artist, and solution specialist at Toon Boom Animation. Hello, Maria. Hello, it's me. Hello, 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 hello. Yay! I'm finally back on Twitch. I made it. I'm back. <laughs> And Alexi Duclo is a product manager focused on Toon Boom's tools for game development. Hello, Alexi. Hi. <laughs> and I'm not doing that uh, whole uh, shtick Mariev just did. <laughs> All right, it's fair so enough. Uh, it's just different energy. So <laughs> it is. And we are going to discuss the process of animating hand drawn characters for 2D games what studios should consider when working with 2D animation, and recommendations for artists interested in animating for game development. If you are joining us live, feel free to type your questions in the chat, and they might come out of my mouth. So uh, while we're here, why do you feel that game development studios might consider hand-drawn or cut-out 2D animation for their projects? Uh, Alex, let's start with you. Oof, uh, like that on the spot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, wait, why do I feel? Yeah. Why do you feel? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, why do I feel that give them? Um, you know, we can zoom out a little bit. Uh, so, Alexi, broadly speaking, uh, what would you say the benefits and challenges associated with hand-drawn and cut-out 2D animation games would be? Like, what are some of the things that people might uh, benefit from having 2D graphics in their games for? And what are some things that um, might be uh, challenges they might run into? So, well, it, it always depends first what you want to do with your game, right? If if you want to start from a, from a point of like what type of art you want to make your game with, right? If you want to make an old school 2D game, then having 2D in your game is probably a good idea. If you want to make a 3D game, maybe having 2D in your game is not the best <laughs> idea. So it's, it always depends what type of game you want to do first. And then based on that, you can go and look around for the solutions you want to uh, use um, well to make your game. And then it also depends on what type of hardware you want to make your game for. If you're trying to make an old school game that will work on a on a Game Boy, maybe you're not going to have as much power as if you want to make one for a PS5. So those are the kind of things you first have to um, keep in mind while uh, looking to what type of animation you want to do, what type of exports you want to use. And then I think I'm going to start to repeat myself. So I guess that's like the... The, the the broad strokes of like what you need to think about when you start making a game in 2D. All right, and Mariev, I can see that you have brought with us a video game character that you made using Toon Boom yeah. Harmony Premium. Can you tell us a little bit about the character that you designed? Okay, uh, wait, not this, not the one I'm doing now, which is gonna be cool, it's gonna be a corn candy. I've never tasted those. Printed they taste like corn and sugar. Um, no, yeah, this is. It mostly just uh, tastes like sugar. <laughs> this is uh, Gabby Grape. Yeah, Gabby Grape. Um, it, it was not a grape at first, it was a chickpea, but we already had a green character, so I made it purple, so now it's a grape. <laughs> and uh, that character is super great because it's a circle. <laughs> So Gabby Grape is the character that I made for the game classes that we teach, like the how to make games with Harmony class that uh, Toon Boom gives every once in a while. Um, I wanted something very simple so that people could focus on learning how to make games rather than spending five hours cleaning a character. <laughs> so um, I wanted to make it cute, but I didn't want it to be just another bouncing ball exercise because... Oof, 
every animator is must have done at least like 500,000 of them in the same week. So I'm not gonna do like a boring bouncing ball. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a little grape thing. And uh, it's cute, it's got a little highlight and of course it wears glasses. But the cool thing is that with this little grape, I mixed uh, the, because in Harmony you can do like hand-drawn and you can do cutout for games, but you can also mix both, right? Because that's the power of Harmony. You can do that for TV and you can do it for games. You can mix like traditional frame by frame and cut out. So the grape is, uh, is hand-drawn animation. It's just a little uh, grape thing, circle, ball. It's got a mouth with teeth because like, that makes sense. And uh, But the cool thing is that, wait, where's the mouth? Yeah, there you go, it's got teeth. So be, fair, be careful not eat that grape. But the cool thing is that if I go to the skinning, view and this is like a spoiler alert we're going to talk about that later but i just want to show you the cool stuff first <laughs> um i'm able to change between a bunch of different uh oh, oops i <laughs> i hit the layer <laughs> smart i'm able to change what that grape is wearing is it does it need reading glasses does it need cool glasses or perhaps is it feeling a bit flowery so you can, you can you can change it. Even though it's hand drawn, I mixed a bit of cutout in there because that prop is actually cut out, or what we call raw animation into the gaming uh, language in Harmony. And it's cut out. So if I make a new one, uh, we'll be able to animate it. So so yeah. So that's my character. It's Gabby the Great. I really love the uh, the, the different uh, skins you can put on that character, especially the sunglasses. Uh, it is a really cute look. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention too about the characters, I, I love the contrast between uh, the resting pose and then the mouth open pose. Uh, it's just delightful. Thank you. I'm making a Halloween skin now because you know uh, it's Halloween soon. Yay! Amazing. Uh, so I want to ask you both, uh, what should studios consider when designing and animating characters for 2D games? Mariev, I'll start with you. As an animator, what would you consider when designing 2D characters for a game? Um, what I would think about is how practical is the design? Because the design can be really cool, but if it's not practical, it's yeah, I'm not a big fan. Um, because I think uh, a lot of people will not like to have constraints and like have restriction in terms of design because it kind of removes creative freedom from them or whatever. But I think it's great. I like to play within, um, within how, how do we say, uh, not guidelines, but like, yeah, with restrictions, right? So when you, when you, when you work for games, uh, let's say that you want to go for a um, puppet style uh, um, so I'm going to go get our little puppet here. Um, it's a very, very cute character, but in, in the way it was designed, it was also thought that this was going to be a raw character, like, like a, a puppet. So there's a lot of uh, pieces that you know that are going to be separated and it's just going to work. For example, the gradient on that leak. The name is Perry, actually. It's per, per, Perry Poirot, which basically means Perry the leak in French. So that's really cute. Um, so that's Perry, the leak. Um, so like the gradient here uh, is uh, placed in a strategic way so that if I take this piece and I rotate it, it still works. Um, but if the gradient instead, uh, somebody into the development team insisted that the gradient should be um, Add another, uh, oh, I was not on the right layer. There we go. Uh, Someone insisted that gradient was there just so that it was annoying that we moved the pieces because the pieces are in the gradient. Then I'm like, mm, this is not like somebody could have taken another decision, right? So I think for TV, it's a bit different because there's a bit more leeway. But for games, it's a lot about efficiency because sometimes just to solve a problem like that, that is just a little gradient. Thing, uh, it, it could make your make your puppet a lot heavier, and it's not like a rendered TV show. It's live game, so like the lighter your character is, the better it is. So um, 
Yeah, I think it's for cutout, it's always about trying to uh, work with the least pieces possible. So for this character, the animations are very, very fluid, but we don't have that many um, drawing substitutions. We do the most with the formers and peg animation. So that's for cutout. I think people should be careful about um, what they design and what they do to try and keep it efficient. And for hand-drawn, uh, it's the same. So there's a bit of a guidelines that uh, you have to follow just to be careful um, and not make your game too heavy. So I think heaviness of a design is the key word here. <laughs> no, those, those are fair points. Uh, you don't want to bog down the uh, game engine or fill <laughs> memory with uh, tons of uh, 4K PNG images of your character in all these I different think... poses if you can't avoid it. I think a good example of that is, um, um, I guess I, I can mention games, right? <laughs> um, well, there was, a third, there was a game that came out a few <laughs> moons ago with bugs fighting each other at the bottom of a whale. And uh, most of that game was animated in hand-drawn animation, but uh, that's because in the screen, in the screen, the character was this big which worked for hand-drawn because then the sprites didn't need to be 500 uh, pixels by like 5,000 pixels, I mean. Yeah, Shnew guessed it, that's great. So it was a very, very small character, but sometimes there was bigger character on screen. And the smart thing is that even though it was hand-drawn, they would break the character into many pieces. So each pieces were still mostly hand-drawn, but it means that you could have, if the head needed to move, you could at least move it on a rotation point so that the sprite sheet for, for the character would be maybe head, a bunch of little legs, rather than being 500 big images of the character moving in the sprite sheet. So even for hand-drawn, it's always smart to try and break down your character into maybe not too small, but smaller pieces. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, Alexi, I wanted to ask you, um, as, as someone who is keeping this in mind on a game development point of view, uh, is there anything the studio should consider when designing and animating characters for 2D games? So it's always, um, it's, it's actually a good question. It's a kind of an, an important one. Like you always need to make sure that the character you're going to make or you're going to create um, fulfills some kind of like, um, how would I say that? Um, Purpose? I don't know, standard, quality standard for the programmer and the designers, right? You're making a game, so you're not just making your thing in a vacuum on one side. So if your designer tells you that this character needs to have skins, for example, then you need to make sure that you're going to prepare your character to have skins down the line. If mm -hmm. uh, it tells you that it doesn't, then you can completely move past it. Uh, it's also going to depend on the technology you're using. So depending on which game engine you use, you may be able to use um, both sprite sheets and um, cutout exports, but certain, actually most game engine except for Unity will only support the sprite sheets. So that's also something you're going to have to deal with. And then when you even further than that, we have uh, um, Unity, for example. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use Unity a lot because that's the game engine we have worked with the most. Um, Unity can do a lot of things that can help with animation or with uh, palettes or with even if you want to do your skinning system inside Unity, there's nothing that prevents you from doing that if you have this custom thing you make yourself. So it's always going to be to be mindful of what uh, the technology allows and your designer wants, but also um, because when you start animating, um, while you can add certain stuff, like for example, you animate a character, you send that to your designer programmer, and then they come back to you saying, oh, wait, we forgot an arm. It would be nice that the character has a third <laughs> arm. Well, In his forehead, preferably. <laughs> 
for example, you can do that. It's not a problem to add it, but it's going to be more work than if you had designed it like that from the start. So a good thing is to make sure that, well, once you've done, um, for example, your um, pre-prod, so all the drawings pre-prod before you start going into production to make sure that you have every element that your character is going to, it's gonna character or asset or whatever this is gonna um, use is already defined so that you can start from like a good base and I think that's like personally as a as a game designer like like the most important thing after that the way you animate the way you create your art well it's mostly up to you and that's mostly Maria that can answer those questions. <laughs> But yeah, that's a very good point. And I, I think it's it's important to consider like these are characters that are going to be inside a game. Uh, so you should know what your character is going to need to do yeah. uh, when you're animating them. Um, so Mariava, I wanted to kick the question to you, which is well, when you're working on Gabby Grape, how similar was your approach to animating this character compared to animating a character for TV animation? I mean, from an animation standpoint, animation is animation, so it's there's no difference in that way. Uh, but the one thing I had to be careful of is, um, you know, like just uh, well, just make sure that it cycles. But like you know, for TV animation, you also have cycles. Um, so for for Gabby, there was no difference. Uh, like hand drawn animation is hand drawn animation in that in that way, but for this guy, uh, the leak that I did not animate, um, I do know that there's some things to be careful about because it's a like there's more difference in cutout animation than in hand drawn uh, for this character uh, for for these two characters. So the one thing that is different is that since we are exporting this guy to unity there's uh there's little limitations for the deformers so if you go to uh, this part here the little hair loop thingy if i go to the deformers you see in tv animation i would have put a curve in there but this is gaming so unity uh doesn't understand what curves and envelope is but it's got its own little thing that is super efficient it's got what we call the game bones. So if you've been using Harmony for a few years, maybe you've seen that you're like, game bone? What do I do with a game bone? Well, that's it. It's it's a bone deformer for Unity. Um, it's different than the default bone deformer because the default bone deformer, uh, Unity does not understand it, but it understands the game bones. And it's actually uh, pretty light and optimized and stuff for Unity. So. And that's why that's the bone that we use. But it works really great, and it makes some very beautiful thing. And there's a few ways to make it um, bend a bit more. Because when we think of a bone deformer, we think of something that is very rigid and just like folds uh, into it, or like a very rigid uh, arm or something. But if I if I put it, yeah, if I put one in that little um, glasses branch here. Um, I can get my bone deformer. And of course, if I make the uh, radius here very small, it's going to be bending like the traditional bone that we are used to. But, you know, if, you, if you're a bit crafty, <laughs> like most uh, game developers are, uh, you, can, you can make your bone a bit longer than the shape. And by having a very large radius, then you can have a uh, thing that curves more than what we had before which is what they did for the little hair strands there. So yeah, That's really uh, cool. there's limitations like this. So uh, you did mention that like, you know, the, the fundamental techniques for animating a character traditionally um, in games and in uh, TV series uh, would be very similar. Uh, but there are some differences. Like if you look at like a timeline of a character animation, uh, for a game, you're going to see like a lot of different uh, loops in one timeline. 
of, of the different animation that character is going to do, like whether it's walking or jumping, uh, usually in place. Uh, oh, no, that's what you meant. Sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> I, I mean, it could be anything. Anything that comes to mind because you you do have experience um, in uh, TV animation. Um, I was also okay. curious too about uh, other things you might want to consider, like um, uh, how characters, how players interact with uh, a character when you're animating for a controller. Um, are there any elements that uh, you would consider? Um, important to know about when animating characters for game development? Uh, one thing that is very important to note is... Um, I forget what I was about to say. Uh, forgot. Well, why don't we talk about some of the tools that you use to build this, the, the character and uh, maybe some other tools that you think are really important for game animation and game development. I know you mentioned uh, skins and game bones. Uh, could we talk a little bit about some of the uh, different skins that are on both the uh, the leak and uh, grape characters? Um, oh, I do remember. Sorry for the the question about like the animation. Uh, yes. Like the difference in, in the timeline is really important because, um, yeah, I thought we were going to talk about that later, but. Um, yeah, so for when you work in TV animation, so like the animation stays the same, but the way that you use the timeline is really different. So in a TV show, you're going to have your your scene, your shot with your character going from A to B, and that's it. And But in a game, the timeline is super different. Actually, you have to take your timeline and you have to break it into multiple parts. Um, so for example, I will dedicate my frame one to 50 to the idle cycle. So I'm gonna have my cycle, uh, oops, I'm gonna go get my character actually. Yeah, an idle cycle is when your character is standing there doing nothing, but not standing uh, stone statue solid so you think that the game is broken. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm about to say. It's, it's important to have it because otherwise there's no difference between is it uh, if the game frozen or not. Um, uh, so, like for the enemies, it's less of important. Sometimes the enemies can just stay still, but for the main character, it's super important. If you want to cut corners, guys, <laughs> don't cut corners on your main character. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have my my idle cycle here, uh, and I want to point out that even though it goes from one to fifty, my kind of uh, allocated space, even if I don't have any movement from thirty to fifty, um, I don't want to get my next movement right after my idle, just because what if I want to change it? What if I need a bit more frames? So it's pretty common to leave, gap, to leave gaps in between your actions. So my frames 1 to 50 are dedicated to my idle cycle, but my idle animation that I planned, I made it go from 1 to 31, I think. Yeah, like this. Uh, usually when I animate cycles, this is just me, but I like to make them cycle three times so that I can actually see what they're doing. <laughs> but for the game engine, I don't make the marker, which is what we use to export, and I won't make that last for three cycles because then I'm going to export the two thirds of the drawings that are going to be useless, right? And even though Harmony is pretty smart at recognizing double drawings, I just don't want this to be messy. So I, I do it myself and so that's it. I'm going to separate my timeline in um, logical like numbers. So maybe like 1 to 50, then maybe every 100. It depends on how complex your character is. And then I'm going to make my cycles cycle three times. And I'm going to just select one of them as a exporting marker so that I don't have too many images. And I do that for every state. But before you do the states, and then again, this is not like that's the thing with game dev, but now there are schools that teach it. But back in my days, there was pretty much no schools that taught you how to make games. You just had to make them, I guess. So um, when I was doing games a few years back or trying to at least, and I was in the community and stuff, I saw lots of people, we were doing what we call um, um, animation trees. <laughs> we were just trying to plan out what we had to do just to make sure we were not having too many things to do. Um, because it's so easy to have an idea in your head and never actually put it on paper. So then it stays in your head. 
I see lots of game devs have that issue. Like, oh, they have this crazy world and plan in their head, but like never able to actually do it. So that's one thing you could do. Plan it truly, like make your animation tree like this. Say, I'm going to have an idle and a bite and a walk and a jump. And then you can say, I'm going to start with these three and maybe make a demo and have people try it out and see if they like it or not. And then you can build up on more. But always start with small, concise uh, goals like that. Yeah, I went for a yeah, while. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, Alexia, I want to ask you, actually, uh, if you have any thoughts about uh, the planning process for uh, games and how that might touch on animation. Well, it, it always depends, like, always start, like, with the design, like, your game. You need to first figure out when you create, does your game as a main character? What what type of, like, um, yeah, like, you need to start putting your bases, right? Do, like I said, does your game as a game uh, game character? If that's the case, you need to then define every type of action that character may or may not be doing, and then you need to see based on like well, everything cost relationship to like is it easy or difficult? Can we reuse animation to do that specific thing is is doing? Then you can dilute all of that and come with a list of all the animations you need to do and then you need to figure out which one of those are cycles and which one of those are just one and done um, and then it depends also do you want to do very very uh, i mean it also depends on like the art of artistry of let's say the not just the game designer but the whole game in itself like do you just want to do let's say one specific animation let's say you have a character that's going to grab something mm -hmm. are you just going to do one animation where it's just grabbing and everything it grabs will be using that same animation or do you want to go the extra mile and do one specific animation per object it can um grab so it's always depending on like a lot of things right uh, what do you want to do uh, what are the resources that are available to you to do all of this what is the cost what is the time um, um, there's there's a lot of things that can be like taken into account, but if you have let's say no consideration for time cost or everything, you're just doing that for yourself. It's always going to be like you start at, at the design level. Like I said earlier, you really want to make sure that everything you have an idea for, you've thought beforehand as much as possible. Of course, sometimes you're going to make a game and then you're going to figure out, oh, wait, if the character can do that, it's even more fun. So then you're going to have to add an animation and everything. But you want to be sure that you have everything that is like already set in stone from the start and especially all those animation types like and everything. So you kind of have to outline all the requirements and then develop a plan to approach it. Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, Mariev and Alexia, I want to ask you, um, why would you consider, why would a game development studio consider Toon Boom Harmony for their 2D projects and, and the 2D animation in, in their games? Uh, Mariev, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, when it, well, uh, one of the reasons to use Harmony, I think, would be because it's, it's, it's an animation tool and it's very flexible and it's the tool that we know like a lot of the animators out there that's the tool that we work with maybe in a studio it's the tool we learned in school or whatever uh, when i was making games back then the reason why we wanted to try harmony and that was back in like 2014 so it's been a while uh, um was because that's the tool i i knew and it's um it's great because we could do like our games uh, assets in harmony and we could also do our uh, cinematics that we plan in there. So we could do so, mu so much work in the same software. 
and having less softwares to hop and jump around was a blessing, especially for the devs that were working with us, because then they didn't have to manage, uh, try to get like files from maybe like Photoshop and, and another software and like Harmony and like five different softwares. And it was very straightforward into the, um, how we did it. And, uh, but I guess the, the biggest thing is because it's, it's just a tool that I like and that a lot of artists like. And, you know, game dev studios, there's the, the people that like code and dev and made software. And usually we just hand them the art. So like they, like they're not the one who are going to go and play in harmony. So they just want a software for their artists to be uh, happy. And just to go back into a question from before, because I, I was a bit surprised and I didn't know what to answer, but now I thought about it while Alexi was explaining other stuff. Um, two big, big difference when you animate for games and for TV is that uh, like when you're in TV, you do like what I call passive animation. So someone's gonna, just going to like sit down and watch and be guided by your animation. Like they're all you control the show, but in a game, it's what I called reaction animation. So like somebody's going to press on a button and your animation needs to be the answer to that pressing. So sometimes in animation for TV, if you want your character to jump, you're not going to spend maybe like 5,000 frames on it to be super smooth. But in games, sometimes you're going to be limited to like three or four drawings and that's it because it needs to go fast for like action games, for example. And another difference as well is, um, like I said, like uh, sometimes you have to have less frames and still be useful. And the, the tip I always give when I teach that kind of stuff is for games, it is good to over animate because my character, if it's far away in the screen, I will not see if it's making small, small movement. And I see lots of people making games and they're like, look at my animation, it's so great. And they like zoom in and then you put it in the game engine. It's super small. You don't know what the heck's going on with the world. So like, that's also something to be careful about. Sorry for going back, but yeah. Those I are very good points. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Alexi, this is a conversation that we've had in the past, but in your opinion, um, why would a game development studio consider Toon Boom Harmony for their projects? Um, so. The, the way a game is generally made is that, uh, you know, there's different uh, phases. You start with the pre-production where you have like a game design and you start hiring people and you start seeing what are the resources you can use, what technology you're going to get. And um, more often than not, now a, a bit to uh, go back to what Marie have said, um, when they try to hire artists, those come generally with the skill of having used Harmony at some point in their life. So that is like, that is, I would say, like the biggest draw from that to be like, okay, you know how to use Harmony. And Harmony is a pretty powerful tool. It's something that we can do a lot with. And uh, you can now use that to make game with. So you can find trained people that are going to be able to either make rigs inside Harmony or just animate. Because that's also something that is very interesting with Harmony itself, is that you can kind of have that... 3D pipeline kind of way. So you will have one person that's going to make a rig that's going to prepare all of that. And then you can just send that to someone else that's going to animate everything. So, and then that person can send that to another person that's going to import that inside the game engine. So you also have like this very streamlined pipeline that we try to um, develop to make sure that people can use as much as they can from Harmony. And then for people who are just new, who wants to try, who wants to start somewhere, Harmony is also a very good starting point because we already have a lot of classes. We already have a lot of like training available out there. We have, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I would probably just say the same thing again. So yeah, I think I guess that that's <laughs> like the the big draw for Harmony. We have well said, and uh, I, I've got a question in the chat that uh, I'm kind of curious about. Uh, so Doug and Swift 
are asking, does Harmony uh, have any tools for handling procedural movements, um, either with inverse kinematics or similar? Uh, I'm guessing this is more of a question for cutout character rigs for games. Um, but do you, would this be something that be handled more in a game engine or on the, uh, the Harmony side? So Derek also said that it's like a, for example, a grab animation on a point and varying the grab in height and point in space as an example. So I think, and like Alexi can help me with that, but here I have this uh, character here, the, the leak. Uh, in its hand, there is what we call a uh, anchor. And ensure anchor. Oh my God, how do you say that word? That thing. You, you got it right. Anchor, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the thing <laughs> boats. <laughs> um, so, um, as far as the animation is concerned for now, like the animation is made in harmony. And then what we export is like the, the rig in many, many pieces. And then the animation is exported as an XML, I think, to Unity. But what I mean, what I want to say is that the anchor is just one point in Unity, like the if it's grabbing something, like it's grabbing like a, a prop, then that is just a point to refer to Unity that Unity can then use. You can attach anything you want to it. So that's hey, my part of the answer. Yeah, I'm just gonna. No more. <laughs> I'm just gonna take over there because it's not really. Uh, <laughs> I try. It's it's not <laughs> it's, it's not pertaining to what he's asking. Um, actually, like so, so people who may want to know what what inverse kinematic is, uh, it's basically you're gonna like, for example, on your arm, you're gonna create bones, and then by just moving the and you create bone, and then you create a joint between your um, shoulder and your wrist, and by just moving the wrist, everything moves together. And that is IK. That is inverse kinematic animations. Um, for now, as opposed to for kinematics, where you have like the shoulder and then the shoulder moves the arm and the arm moves yes. the hand. Yeah, because we right. have like AFK in harmony for TV, there is, but I'm not yeah, sure it's for me yet. There is there is uh, IK for for like you said for TV. So that is something that you could export as a spreadsheet uh, if you want to create animation inside harmony with that but the second you put that inside your game engine there will not be any ik applied to it and for the cutout part so far um it is not there we are looking at a solution for that okay so that's well, going to be an upcoming feature uh one thing i wanted to ask uh for alexi is mm -hmm. um and we touched on this a little bit in the previous question but Okay, so you get your animation in Harmony. How do you get it into your game engine? And do you need to use a specific game engine to work with animation made in Harmony? So we have two ways of um, exporting animation from Harmony, actually. So we have what we call the export to sprite sheet. So what this is going to do is it's going to take a snapshot of each frame of animation that you made. And it's going to export that in a, in a huge atlas with one, sp uh, yeah, one sprite is one frame of animation. Now, we use some kind of uh, algorithm to make it um, the smallest possible. So if you have yeah. two frames of animation that look similar, we are on only going to export it once. And then on the side, we'll have a small XML file that will tell where on the Atlas this specific animation is. And basically, once you have this type of export, you can use that on virtually any um, game engine, as long as you program yourself the importer that will read that XML file and create those animations again. So that's the one way of doing it. And what's great with this way is that you can virtually use every single tool available to you for Harmony because it's just a snapshot of what's on the screen, right? So you can use every type of blur, deformers, uh, and stuff deformers and effects, uh, everything you can use. It's essentially that. a PNG export. Exactly. In one... Um, in one big atlas. And then we have the second type of export, which is the 
cut out oriented exports. This export only works with Unity um, because we have created a, an SDK, a plugin that works with Unity that allows you to import those. What that export does is that instead of exporting each frame one by one, it's going to explode your character and export uh, only the pieces of this character. Uh, on this one, uh, in the screen, you can see that every single face has been exported. But if you show no, the export for the other... Oh, that... like the, um, it's actually the, the export you're talking about. I just did it on the grade by mistake. I wanted to do it on the leak, but I forgot. But it's still there. So like instead of being all the animation one by one with every props, it's just the hand drawn animation. But yeah. the props are just one drawing that is then shared. Um, exactly. In Unity, you can see and here. For the other type, it's just like it's going to export every um, drawing separately. <laughs> and and with uh, some files on the side that tells you how to rebuild the skeleton, what type of animation has to be played, their names and everything. And inside Harmony, when you use our SDK, and we made it so that it's absolute, it's super easy to import, you don't have to do anything crazy, then it just uh, rebuilds the character inside Harmony using the drawings and plays the animation as closely as possible from what you saw inside Harmony. The only problem there is that you have a bit more um, constraints to work with so you can only use those game bones we talked about. You only have, uh, you can only use one cutter per drawing. You don't have access to any effects so far. So you can't use blurs and stuff like that. You can add them inside Harmony after that using post processes. <clears throat> post processing. Um, and there are, uh, I think that's most of the constraints you have to use. Um, right. So, so you have two options. One of them is you can bake a lot of things in, but you're going exactly. to have a heavier file size and less flexibility. And the other option is that you can stick to things that uh, can be interpreted in Unity, uh, but then you have the restrictions of you can't bake in, you know, all of the compositing or blur effects uh, or, or really fancy rigging effects that you'd be using in a series because Unity doesn't support those. Exactly. We got a question from uh, Doug and Swift again, uh, asking if uh, there's a way to convert non-game bone rigs to game bone rigs inside of Harmony. And I, I do love just the the pattern of that question. Um, uh, Lexi Mariev, what do you think about uh, like the process of swapping out those those different bones? Uh, well, the answer is if you already animated them. No, because they're two <laughs> different kinds of deformers. So like they're not gonna be able to transfer animation from one to the other. But if you don't anim if you didn't animate yet and you're like, oh bummer, I didn't know there was game bones, you can just substitute them for like you can go ahead and remove the old bone deformer and just put a new one. It's not that complicated. But unfortunately, no, there is no way to just take a rig that was made with the regular deformers and have it made for game bones. Like they're two different uh Right. worlds such as like Alexi said like rigging for games and rigging for tvs is two different things um there's a lot of constraints uh the, not constraints like different um parameters from one to the other um it also yeah, depends so... what you're trying to do right like if you're trying to use the unity sdk to export your character rig from arm into unity uh, that's one set of um challenges and constraints and if you're using the uh, export sprite sheet then you can make your character however you want to make it. Yeah, yes. in here I have an example of like the, uh, this is the raw exporter that we call the one with uh, every drawing separate. So I have the glasses on its own, the flower, the, the, the other glasses on their own. Uh, and then Unity is going to just take the these and just put them back together uh, in the software. And then whoop, I have here the one that we call the easel GS export, which puts everything together and just 
I just took a screen cap to have a very few showing up because it's small, but like it, it would take every frame and just put it on the sprite sheet, which is close to what you would get from like people knowing from the past, like Atlas and Sprite sheet, what they were like from the NES game uh, that they rem rem remember having them one after the other. The thing I want to precise here, because I've been there, when I've worked with Harmony at first, I got the export and I was like, where did I go wrong? These things are not in the right order. Oh my God. And that's because Harmony is actually trying to be as smart as possible. So it's going to take the least amount of space per each of these frames. So if placing two frames side by side takes less space, even if they're not in the right order, Harmony is going to do it. It's not going to be pretty, but it's for your own good because then the sprite sheet will be lighter and you can fit more of your drawings on the same atlas or sprite sheet so that it's lighter. So it's optimized. And even if they're not in the right order, it's not a problem because it comes with an XML that you can just feed. No, not XML. It's a JSON file that you can just feed to whatever software you're going to use it, then start uh, from there. Uh, however, if you want to get your sprites in a, the right order, you can always export a GIF and lots of software can just make a sheet for you like that. So I just thought I would say it because sometimes it's a bit surprising. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that it's actually optimized and great. And to, to, to come back to the question you asked, um, Mike, uh, we, we can actually show, uh, if Maria wants to show a bit, um, so, um, uh, Maria, can you go back to the, to the leak? To the what? Leak to Perry. So as you can see here, if she moved in the, in the, she moves in the timeline, there's all those animation that we've made. And now, uh, if she opens unity. Also, by the way, there's a scene marker view useful to see all your things. So these are all the states that we will export to Unity. Yay. That we've actually already exported to Unity. Because oh, you're right. <laughs> Perry and uh, a small scene with Perry is already inside the SDK. So if you download the SDK from the Unity Asset Store, you have access to the scene we're seeing here. And you also have a small scene that I've personally made uh, yes. <laughs> so you can play around with the character inside Unity and you can see how how everything works. So Yeah, and, um, and if you can't find it on the Unity Asset Store, we also have it at tuneboom.com slash gaming at the very bottom of the page, it's a link okay. to the SDK, and you can get it there too. But it's now on the Asset Store. I've made sure. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool and easy to get. <laughs> it's super easy to get. And it's gone. when it's opening <laughs> any moment now, while we're waiting for that to load, uh, Maria, do you have any recommendations for artists who are interested in animating for 2D games as, as like resources or videos they can check out or other uh, things they might want to consider? Yeah, um, we have a cool site called learn toonboom.com and there's cool videos out there you can watch. Um, there's also a bunch of resources on the Unity website as well to learn how to actually make the game um, so that you can learn both Harmony and Unity. There's a, a bunch of um, tutorials that are linked and oh, we have a cool community on Discord that you can learn from. Um, I At uh, discord.gg slash toonboom animation. Um, yeah, so there's many, oh, yes, it open. So yeah, yeah, we have many resources. We also have the online classes that people can take. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of resources. Amazing. Uh, Alexi, do you have any recommendations for people who are interested in getting into game development? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, th there's a lot of places you can get, of course, um, tutorials and everything, but it's always going to depend on what you want to use, what text you want to use. Um, if you want to use Unity, Unity has a great community on YouTube. You can find so many, so many tutorials to figure out how to make a game. The best way, since Unity is free to download, 
until a certain point. Uh, your <laughs> best bet is to just go there, download it, and try yourself. Um, if you want to use uh, Unreal Engine, there's also a lot of tutorials on on YouTube and on their own website, Unity as well. Unity has one of the best documentation I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, if you want to use Godot, that's a bit more difficult to find uh, um, resources, but you can always do it. Um, I'm I'm the kind of person who believes that if you want to make games, you just you have to do it. Open open <laughs> a software and you try to make a small clone of a small game you can find, and that's the best way to figure out how to. Um, how to start making game, how to process with everything you have to process with, how to bounce back every time you have a, an issue because making games is just it's just yeah figuring out problems actually. Uh, so so that's yeah that's that's my advice on what people should do when they want to make games. Yeah. yeah, start small. And, uh, start super small. Because your yeah, yeah small, first game needs to be a and trial. Don't be af- and do not be afraid to fail. Do not be afraid fail. to even quit Failing the game. If you everything you're gonna make is gonna teach you something. So I've made tons of projects that I've never finished. But every time I've finished, I've every time I've stopped, I've figured out a better way to do things and to just do things. Like I've seen so many people in the game that I've seen being like, this is gonna be my masterpiece. I'm like, how many games did you make? None. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like do a do a, <laughs> do a pong clone or something. Like just do something and learn from something. the mistakes. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. Yeah. Just do something and finish it and then do something else. Or not finish it, but learn from it at least. And uh, I, I found the, the the assets and I will I'm I'm looking for a scene if I can find it. <laughs> um so uh, the scene is inside so Toon Boom, uh, how many I can see. <laughs> uh, wait. So wait, sorry. I'm oh, getting a live tutorial to... of how to open up this this uh, package. <laughs> so because you, need you have to, to understand. Usually, I go... work from things that are not properly packaged, and this is very well packaged. <laughs> <laughs> go back to inside Unity. Go back inside Unity. Yeah. Go into your project window. I don't know what I did. I, I don't know something. what you did. Uh, okay. Well, we'll see what happens. This go is back exciting. in your. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's, it might break everything. So let's see what you did. Uh, so on your side, on your project, you can go to Toon Boom Harmony Game SDK and then Toon Boom Harmony, uh, Harmony SDK. I think Once I broke it's it. done importing, which I don't know what you've imported. <laughs> I think I broke it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. I don't, yeah, want to I don't know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I clicked the. Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, go to your yeah, Harmony SDK. SDK, then you should have something that's called temp. Uh, Template samples samples. Oh, so that's why we changed the name. And then you no, have a scene it. there. You yeah, have a scene there. I see it now. <laughs> I, mean, you I was looking it, for another name. See, <laughs> yeah, you can see the character. So if you go into your game, mm-hmm. and then if you start the game, I know how to do should that. Be, unless you have yeah, you have a lot of errors now because you <laughs> <laughs> because you broke it. <laughs> The character is there. That's all we need. <laughs> okay, the character is there. I feel like that is a success. Yeah. Thank you, Mariev and Alexi, for joining us for today's discussion on hand-drawn animation in 2D games. Is there anything that you'd like to um, direct our viewers to if you want to promote anything either on Toon Boom's website or anything that you've done recently as like a cool or interesting project? And... Uh... <laughs> One thing that I want to show before we leave is that, you know, when you import your character in Unity, your character is like, that's what I meant before when I said it's taken from Harmony and brought into Unity. You have your uh, asset here, your game object, that's what it's called, if I remember. And uh, here, the anchor I was talking about shows up here. So it's basically something that you can just attach anything to it, even like a 3D cube if you want. Um, Yeah, so so that's it. Yay. And, That's uh, really cool. 
I'm sorry for making any mistakes because when I tried to drag something, my tablet just froze halfway. So I kind of dropped a unknown asset <laughs> in my scene. I'm going to figure that out. That's after. okay. That's how they yeah. know that this is live. Uh, it, so thank yeah, you to everyone who happens, joined you know. us for today's live You've discussion. You've been to my streams before. Something always happens. <laughs> I'm curious. It's true. But that, that's part of the fun. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. And if you're curious about animating for games using Toon Boom Harmony, be sure to visit toonboom.com slash gaming for more examples of what Harmony can do for your game development project. And on Tuesday, be sure to join us for Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises a storyboard with a little help from audience suggestions. You can watch previous episodes on, on our Twitch and YouTube channels. So thank you for watching. And until next time. Look, 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 it's the asset store. Yeah. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us.